1440p, 360Hz, 1.3 billion pixels per second. First of all, let's just agree that those specs are absolutely ridiculous. Like, I did not expect to be playing on a monitor with those kind of specs anytime soon, but here it is, the ASUS PG27 AQN. It's pretty much the god mode of gaming monitors. Basically, if you want the best of everything, this is pretty much it. 1440p resolution, so pretty much any game you play will look nice, and up to 360Hz refresh rate means that those competitive titles will run as smooth as possible. Now the first question that I had powering this thing up was whether you can even run games at 1440p 360fps, because man, that is a lot of pixels. 78% more pixels, in fact, than a 1080p 360Hz monitor. But actually, yeah, you can. It's pretty doable. In a Valorant deathmatch, for example, I was easily surpassing 360 frames per second at 1440p with low settings. And this was with my own system, which has a 12900K and an RTX 3090. Even in Overwatch 2, which I've been playing a bunch of recently on this monitor, uh, you're looking at a full ranked match here where I barely ever dipped below 360 and was more often around that 500 FPS mark. Surprisingly, my 3090 still isn't fully utilized at 1440 most of the times hovering around that 80 to 90 percent mark. Realistically though, you'd need at least an RTX 3070 to power these kind of frames at 1440p, even for these easy to run esports titles. The most important component would be your CPU, of course, if you're interested in these high refresh rates. If you're running anything before an Intel 12th gen or Ryzen 5000 chip, then you'll probably be bottlenecked below 360 hertz. Now I think the best way to kind of describe this monitor in a nutshell is that it's a nice Nice bump up from the previous gen high refresh rate 1440p monitors like the PG279QM for example. That's a 1440p 240Hz monitor which was really nice, really impressive, but you can tell right away without even running any tests or benchmarks that this is a faster panel. Sure the refresh rate is higher here but you've also got to have the response times to keep up with it and that's where the 27AQN really delivers. In fact this is the fastest IPS monitor that I've tested and by quite a big jump. What we're after here is the least amount of motion blur, which is another way of saying we want the fastest pixel response times possible. The faster those pixels can respond and switch color, the clearer your games will look, especially in fast paced moments. Even though you might be getting 360 hertz, it still takes time for those pixels to transition to a new frame. That transition time is called the response time, and we want those to be as fast as possible to give us the clearest image and avoid ghosting and motion blur. So just how fast is the new ultra fast IPS panel on the 27 AQN? Well, it's really, really fast. With the overdrive mode set to normal, we get a 1.5 millisecond response time average with about 15.5% overshoot. That is an unheard of result for an IPS panel. What's also abnormal here is that for all of the greater grade transitions that you see here, none of them exceed two milliseconds. It would be pretty normal here to see some of these response time values around the three to four millisecond mark, but here we get a really tight result. There is also an esports over drive mode which improves the response time to 1.4 milliseconds but with consequently more inverse ghosting and then there is also an extreme mode which pushes things again a little bit further. The normal overdrive mode though is what you want to be using for the cleanest looking image. With that setting here's how fast the new 27 AQN compares to the competition and as you can see by how high it is on the chart it's really fast. Response times are 0.8 milliseconds faster than its predecessor the PG279QM and realistically it's even on par with Zowie's ultra fast 360Hz TN monitor. The 2566K still tops the chart here as having the fastest raw response times, but clearly the new 1440p panel is ridiculously quick. For a bit more context on how good this is, uh, it's almost a whole millisecond faster than the first gen 1080p 360Hz panel, the 259QN. Now in terms of what this difference actually looks like on the panel, uh, for that we use the UFO ghosting test from blurbusters.com. So here are the 
four overdrive settings on the 27 AQN. You've got off, normal, esports, and extreme, with the normal setting looking the best. It is the clearest out of the four, the least amount of ghosting combined with the least amount of inverse ghosting. As for some context on how good this result actually is, here it is compared to two of ASUS's own high-end monitors, the 1440p 270Hz XG27 AQM and the 1080p 360Hz 259QN. All three of these monitors use IPS panels, and you can clearly see that the 27 AQN provides the least amount of ghosting. And I mean, against the old 360Hz panel, there is a giant difference. The new Zowie monitor though does look a little bit clearer and more defined. It uses a TN panel, which is a tiny bit faster, and those blacks specifically, which have virtually no trailing or smearing, do look pretty clean. Now, the new 27 AQN, it doesn't have any ULMB or motion blur reduction settings, so it can't compete on a motion clarity level of Zowie's Diac. But to be honest, I don't really care that much because the raw response times of this panel are just that good to begin with. It does have a few things that the Zowie monitor does not have though. And let's start with the obvious, 1440p. And yeah, there is a difference. Your games just straight up look better at 1440p. There's less shimmering, there's less stair-stepping, everything gets a slight boost in detail. It's not so much in my opinion that you'll be gaining a competitive advantage, especially in games that you'll be running at 360Hz, like Overwatch, Valorant, CSGO, Rainbow Six. These games all have pretty clean visuals and textures to begin with, so 1080p already looks good. It's typically those more visually cluttered games that really benefit from 1440p, games like like uh, Apex, Call of Duty, uh, Battlefield for example, those games have a lot of foliage and just a lot of game detail and the textures are quite messy. So you know you really feel that benefit of 1440p in my opinion, but at the same time, those aren't really games you're gonna be running at 360 hertz. Games like Overwatch 2, on the other hand, you are going to be running at 360Hz for sure, and although you don't necessarily get a competitive benefit, it does for sure feel more involving and immersive at that higher resolution, and that's honestly something that I did not expect to be saying. You just feel like you're experiencing the game at a deeper level, and that does lead to it being more fun, uh, for me anyway. At the same time, the speed is totally there. At 360Hz with these ultra-fast response times, you honestly don't feel like you're trading off any speed compared to a fast 1080p panel. Now part of this monitor feeling more involving to play on compared to a 1080p panel are the enhanced colors that you get with the 27 AQN. Now out of the box the monitor comes set with the sRGB mode which is basically the mode that you'd want to use for the most accurate colors. Things like web browsing and watching content and the color accuracy in this mode is basically perfect. Color temperature is right around 6500 Kelvin at 200 nits and we get a delta E average of just 0.47 that means that there's basically no difference between the measured and reference colors on the panel. And by the way, this is completely out of the box performance with no calibration or anything like that. Fortunately though, the 27 AQN does also have a wide gamut color mode, which offers a much wider range of colors. And here's what that looks like. It's a pretty massive difference. This mode actually covers 98% of the DCI-P3 color space, which is insane. And if you're like me and you prefer to game with more vibrant colors, then this is definitely the mode to use. With this mode, colors are leaps and bounds ahead of pretty much any 1080p panel on the market. The color range is so wide here that even when layered with NVIDIA's digital vibrance at around 75%, there is no color clipping or blobbing at all. Something else that's really impressive here, the 27 AQ1 can get seriously bright. In fact, it's the brightest monitor that I've tested so far. Coming in at almost 500 nits, you can comfortably use this display in a really bright room. A couple other things here that are really Really cool. Uh, the new IPS panel here uses a dual layer voltage driver. That means that as opposed to the pixel switching from the top left to the bottom right as usual, the pixels additionally switch from the bottom right. Now, I recently picked up a super high speed camera which can film at ridiculous frame rates. Uh, in normal lighting conditions, it can do 1500 frames per second. Even with this extremely slow motion footage though, it's hard to see that dual layer voltage driver in action. As you can see here, frame by frame, the new pixel colors are drawn from top top to bottom, just as you would see from a normal gaming monitor. Doesn't really seem like anything different is happening here, but I might be wrong. What is pretty obvious to see though is the 25 inch 1080p mode that you can set this monitor in, which is crazy to think about because it's kind of two monitors packed into one. I know plenty of people who don't like that 27 inch form factor for some competitive games, and it's really cool to see that recognized here on the PG27 AQN. Now, when you crop the panel down to 25 inches, the resolution becomes 
becomes 2368 by 1332, which is one of the resolution options that you'll see in the game menu. And that's what I'd recommend using here if you prefer to play some games at 25 inch, as opposed to using 1080p. 1920 by 1080 won't be a native resolution at 25 inches, so it'll be slightly blurry. But yeah, the 25 inch mode is actually really, really killer. It's kind of a hack when you think about it, because if a monitor released with these kind of specs and it was 25 inches, it would be the best 25 inch monitor on the market. Think about it for a second, 1332p at 25 inches, that higher pixel density compared to 1080p, that is something that's really, really valuable and you just never see. Then you've got the 98% DCI-P3 colors and the ultra fast IPS panel. There is basically no 25 inch monitor that can compete on the market with this, but here you just enable it on the setting and it's not even the main monitor. Sure, you do get those bezels on the side, but you don't notice them when you're playing one bit and they just disappear when you exit the game. So big thumbs up to ASUS for this feature. It's really, really cool. And then lastly, a bit of a bonus feature here, you get the NVIDIA Reflex module. So it's a latency analyzer. It can tell you the system latency and your mouse latency and stuff like that. All you need to do is plug a USB cable from the monitor to the PC, plug your mouse into the monitor and you'll be able to see the latency of your system and stuff like that. It's not a critical feature. It's not something that you're gonna use every single day or anything like that. But you know, after a hardware upgrade, it is something that you might wanna check here and there. On top of that, you've also got the G-Sync module packed in there as well. That basically gives you a slightly more optimized G-Sync experience and better tuned response times at those lower frame rates. For a 360Hz monitor, I do actually feel that that is a valuable spec because not every game that you're going to play is going to run at 360Hz. And so this makes sure that the panel is always running at its best response time performance, no matter what frame rate it's running at. As for the exterior design, it's a pretty typical ROG gaming monitor. It's not much different to say the 279QM or anything like that. You've got this bulky metal stand which holds the monitor quite well. Plenty of adjustment and stuff like that which is pretty standard. Got an RGB logo here and that kind of gamery aesthetic and then your joystick and menu buttons on the right here. Something definitely worth noting with this design though, there is a fan back here uh, right where you kind of mount the monitor and it is a bit of a loud fan you actually can't hear it now but if you're vase mounting the display and you're kind of revealing that back portion of the monitor then you can kind of hear it it's not something that you're going to hear by any means if you're playing games and have headphones on it's not that loud but if you're in a dead quiet environment and literally there's no sound playing at all then yeah you kind of hear this very soft buzzing noise from that fan and lastly of course is the price at a thousand dollars us it's not a cheap gaming monitor by any means it's actually pretty expensive but when you take a look at the spec and you understand that nothing else can compete with this, it doesn't actually feel that unfair of a price, to be honest. At 1440p, 360Hz, I feel like the experience that you're getting from this monitor is worth the money. It's the first 1440p monitor that I've used actually, where it feels as good as the fastest 1080p options that are out there in terms of speed, focus, and responsiveness. Now, if you're an esports purist and that's all you care about doing on your gaming PC, the clearest and sharpest image is still achieved by the Zowie 360 XL 2566 K. Diac on that monitor is honestly just black magic. There's no other way to explain it. Everything is so clear and sharp all of the time. But I will say you are trading off a lot between that and this 27 AQN for that extra bit of sharpness and smoothness. The 27 AQN is a more expensive monitor and it feels like it too. The better colors, the higher resolution, besides being stacked with a mountain of other features. For that reason, I'd easily call this the best overall gaming monitor right now.